Hello family, um, the last day of May 2020, um, Jesus is Lord, we are glad to be alive. Um, something remarkable happened today, the better part of Eastern Nigeria was on lockdown. I saw videos um, from uh, various of uh, my friends, people in my network, and I was wow. So one man from speaking over the internet, <laughs> speaking over Facebook, maybe YouTube, uh, then makes an order, he makes a call, and this call um, was heeded by every single flesh every single human being every single soul across biafra land there's something there i want people to look at something there now this man is not a an elected president this man is by no means in a democracy that means he didn't get the voting of the people who he is addressing he didn't demand their vote. Why? The man came with a proposition. The man has an idea. He calls the idea Biafra. Now, I'm telling this message to the church. And I, I'm very, very upset. I'm very, very sorry for speaking to the church from the viewpoint of the world. This is a terrain that... that um, false prophets actually use to minister to the church <laughs> they understand they speak from the viewpoint of the world now many of us feel many of us will speak since namdi kanu is anti-christianity is anti the christian church but the guy is doing something he made a call i took some time to listen over to that call namdi kanu is telling uh, Biafrans about what is to come and he's um, telling them that they should pray for the 150 days that they are waiting on Elohim. Hello? He's telling them that they should be praying the Psalms. Okay. I want us to see something here. I've seen a leader that is visionary. I've seen a leader that has an ideology that will liberate not just the Igbo man, an ideology that will liberate the African. From the shackles that the West has put on us, I've seen somebody that has a mission. And above all, I've seen the possibility of a people operating under the authority of a king, even inside the democracy. Did you guys get what I'm saying? Did you guys get? Did, did you notice? It's possible to be under the uh, uh, under the authority of a king, even when you are practicing democracy. Church of Jesus Christ the Ecclesia, Namdi Kanu is teaching you. Namdi Kanu is teaching you a lesson now. You have to listen to that guy. He's teaching you a lesson now. You may not listen to what he's saying because. What he's saying is talking about a messianic arrangement for a people. Uh, but I want you to listen to what is happening. Listen to the interpretation of Namdi Kanu. He's teaching you that you can give your allegiance to Yeshua Mashiach even under a democracy. That it matters not what Caesar is telling you in democracy. It matters not what they are telling you, the, the law of the land, or what the governor is saying, or what the president is saying. Nam the Kanu is teaching you. Nam the Kanu and the Igbo people that heeded to his command. Because the command, you need to listen to how that guy gave that command. The man is teaching you delegated authority. You have thrown your authority away. That's what I'm telling you. You, are, you ought to be learning delegated authority. That the man that has all authority in heaven and on earth sent you out. The man sent you out simply to secure obedience to him in all the nations. Simple. No other task. 
That's all he sent you to do. He didn't send you to open churches. He didn't send you to run Christian churches. He didn't send you to fleece the sheep. He didn't send you to preach and to be inviting people for breakthrough services. He sent you to get obedience to him in Nigeria. That's what he sent you church to do. And you have abused this authority. You have abused this authority. You have not even obeyed this man. You have not even, you have not even taken him as a king. You call him Lord, but you have not called him king. One man made a statement. He's not even on ground. So the issue is even complicated the more. The man is not on ground. That was exactly what Jesus Christ was before the Roman Caesar. Where is this Jesus that gave you this command? I thought we killed him. He's not around. Where is the Jesus that cannot show himself physically? And the people say, ah, we have taken his authority. You say he cannot show himself physically, but our obedience to him is that he's with us. The fact that we are obedient to him is a sign that he is here with us. Because his words, his words have imprisoned us. We are convicted about his vision. He has a vision and his vision has imprisoned us. We are not convict. We don't have our will again. We are convicts of his vision. That was what the early church did in Acts chapter 17, verse 6 to 7. At least that's what we heard the people of Thessalonica say about them. Say they are guilty of treason against Caesar. That means Caesar said, I'm not giving public holiday. You people should go out and do your business. So. But when they heard the command of a king, all of them, Listen, they didn't elect that Namdi Kano. Namdi Kano was not elected by anybody. But when the people recognized the voice of the king, my sheep, hear my voice. That's what the Lord said. All of them went under the authority of that voice. Check Enugu today. Go to Imo. Go, just go. Go to, uh, go to uh, Abia. Go across the Igbo land. If you saw anybody to take you anywhere you will go to, you would have checked the, your whole life out. You would have checked your whole life out because some people obey their king. You go and deny that Namdi Kanu is their king. Go and deny it. Deny it. You have a king. Have you obeyed him like this? Have you ever obeyed Jesus like this? Oh, Jesus is not king again. Oh, his government is not for now, it's for tomorrow. When we die. Okay. Sit down now. Look at things. Compare spiritual with spiritual. Compare Kana with Kana. That's what we're doing here. The time to obey Jesus is now. We have been running churches since we have not obeyed him. Go and secure obedience in the nations. Romans chapter 1 verse 5 called this obedience to the faith among the nation. That's why apostleship is given. That's why apostles are sent. Apostles are sent. The gift is given for the perfecting of the saints, but that gift is sent for the obedience of the nations. We called what we have been doing since perfecting of the saints. Using opportunity to tell people about their breakthrough, tell them how they will make heaven. They ask them to come and sow a seed. Ask them to come and encourage you. Uh, while you are praying for them in the night, or while you are helping them, the ox will not be God. Uh, don't God the ox that does. Ox where? When people are not maturing, when people can't even come under the authority of Jesus Christ. How are you perfecting the saints? Which saints are you perfecting inside Christianity? Well, are you perfecting the saints and the world? The world is still waiting for the manifestation of sons of God. Who are the sons of God that the creation is waiting for? Where are the sons of God? You are perfecting them inside Christianity. Repent. The call is clear. Repent. It's not about your religion now. You have been practicing your religion for 70 years. As long as you, you have been practicing your religion, you have been working in iniquity. The time to repent is now. We are learning now that you can come under the authority of Christ, even inside the democracy. While they are doing their rule of law, you will do your rule of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And you are trying to move in their terrain to tell them that, see, I must get a nation where the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is the policy in that land. That's what they are looking for. That be that they are looking for. They are looking for their own self-determination. Your own self-determination is the holy nation established in this Nigeria. 
That's your own self-determination. The holy nation, the policy of Christ, the doctrine of Christ, established as policy, legitimate legislation in this country. Love, established as policy. Love, oh. Not because you are a Christian, not because you are a Muslim, not because you are a pagan. Love established in this country. You can actually come under the authority of Christ in your day-to-day -day life and you carry it out. And you, you will move to make sure Nigeria lines up with Christ. Is it a crime if Nigeria lines up with Christ? Is it a crime if Nigeria lines up with Christ? Is it a crime if Nigeria becomes a sheep? Is it a crime? Is it a crime if the time will come that you turn on your news and you, you, you won't be hearing the, the, the criminalities that you are hearing today? Is it a crime? Is it a crime if love is policy in this country? Is it a crime? Why do you put your belly before the truth? Why do you put yourself before the truth? Your denomination before the truth? Your religion before the truth? Why do you put your, your, your you before the truth? Is it a crime if Nigeria obeys Jesus Christ? Is it a crime if the constitution of Nigeria is saying Jesus said, so we will do? Is it a crime? Is it a crime if Nigeria's constitution is the Lord says, thou shalt not swear? So we have removed swearing from our legal system. Is it a crime? That's the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is whatever it will require to make Nigeria obey Jesus. That's the work of the ministry. That's why the gift of prophets, apostles, evangelists, uh, teachers, pastors are given. It's to raise a people that will be able to carry out the work, that will be able to make Nigeria a strict adherent follower of the teachings and commandments of Jesus. That's the Great Commission. And this is where we are going back to. If, we, if you think Jesus is coming back, this is where you are coming out of Christianity to return to. You are coming out of Christianity. I'm not, I'm not begging you. I'm telling you what you will do. You are drifting out of the frequency of iniquity that you have been practicing in your Christianity since you are drifting out of there to the place where you will become pivotal in God's agenda to make Nigeria a disciple. Nigeria must be a disciple. If not, you'll be tired of this Nigeria that you are seeing. You think you are seeing trouble in this country? You'll be tired of what you are seeing. You'll be afraid. Every day you'll be afraid. You'll be afraid. Fear. Fear will lodge itself in your heart if you don't obey me. If you don't obey what you are hearing now, fear will lodge itself. Fear will be with you. Fear. You will see now. Just keep watching. Keep watching. Your religion has made you blind and lame. You have churches on every street. Look at your nation. Assassination from front, left, right, and center. Look at your Nigeria. Go to the courts. 450,000 pending divorce cases in your courts. Hello? Hello? That's an indication that Nigeria is not yet discipled. Nigeria is not discipled. Check your entertainment. See the kind of music that they are singing. There's nothing you are doing that is turning the world upside down. You have become the world, IJN. You have rejected Jesus, IJN. You have rejected the Great Commission, IJN. You are pursuing mandates that many family business owners have, have set up, said that it's God that told them. God told them that they should go and satisfy one mandate. And you have followed them with your money, Follow them with your talent, Follow them with your energy, Follow them with what you call your service. You have been in chains to slave masters. Come out of that system. Come out of that system. I didn't send you to come to my church. I'm not starting a church. Come under the authority of Christ. If you don't know what it looks like, look at what happened in Ebola land today. That's what it looks like to be under the authority of Christ. It looks like that. I'm not saying Namdi Akanu is Christ. I'm saying Namdi Akanu, he didn't have to be on ground. Namdi Akanu spoke from UK, but he lined up. Christ is around. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's not around. Christ is around, but it's only the descending people that we see him. Christ is with us. I am with you till the end of the age. But you need to descend to see him. You need to be discerning. You need to be repentant. You need to be spiritual. A carnal man cannot see the Christ that is with us. Only us, we can discern the Christ that is with us. 
The sign that Christ is with us is that all of us have entered alignment. Christianity is not alignment. Christianity is not alignment. It's iniquity. Come out of it. Come out of Babylon. Come out. The system is broken. It's falling. Come out. Come out of Babylon. Come out. There's destruction coming. Come out. There's desolation coming. Come out. There's doom coming. Come out. Babylon will ruin you. It has ruined you. It has plucked out your eyes. But you don't know that you are blind. You are lame today. But you don't know that you are lame. Seeing, you will not see. Hearing, you will not hear. Yeshua came with a message. You don't even know the message that Yeshua came. You have been running at all these church owners' family businesses. You don't know why Yeshua came. You don't know why he came. Your eyes are, are, are plucked off. See, listen. If you don't come out, if you don't come out, I'm talking to believers, those that are called by the name of the Lord. I'm talking to those that belong to God. So you can equally look at the time that Moses came down to meet those people worshipping golden calf. He made a statement. He said, if you, if you are for the Lord, come to me. If you are for the Lord, come to me. The call is make this is clear. If you don't come out, your means of livelihood will be decimated with the judgment that's coming. There's judgment coming on Nigeria now. Judgment, Nigeria is in history, ripe for judgment, ripe like this. The ripeness of Nigeria's judgment is too clear. It's, if if you are descending, you will see that ah, Nigeria, Lord, have mercy on this country. Nigeria is ripe. You know what judgment is? When you see war, that's judgment. When you see pestilence, that's judgment. When you see famine, that's judgment. Food shortage, that's judgment. Famine too is one dimension of famine. They see famine of the world, that's judgment. Many people running after churches, 5,000 sitting capacity churches, but no world. That's judgment. Judgment, check around, look at your churches. Your first prophets still have mega churches. All of them are rich. All of them are private jets. That's judgment. That's judgment for, for your carnality. Your carnality. Every man that went to open a Christian church is carnal. Every man that went to set up his denomination. And God called me to make people rich. God called me to preach uh, uh, salvation. God called me to preach eternity. That man is carnal. That man is carnal. That man is carnal. And that man will only raise a carnal bunch. People that are running after golden calves all over the cities. They run after golden calves all over the cities. And they don't even know that they have not carried out the Great Commission. The decadence of their nation has not even told them that, ah, what are we even doing here? Why is Nigeria like this? And we are still running what we are doing. The carnal man cannot capture the things of the spirit. The carnal man cannot operate righteousness. The carnal mind will do the world. Now the world is teaching us wisdom. You know what I learned today? I thought it's only in a, a human being, only one person that can do it. An entire nation can come under the allegiance of King Jesus Christ, even under a democracy. It's even easier. See, I adopt my heart for the early church. I doff my heart for those men. I don't know the kind of depth that they had. I don't know the kind of spirit that they had. That spirit, eh? we need that spirit now. That spirit, we need that spirit now. We need that spirit now. These guys went into Roman Empire. They marched boldly into Roman Empire with their chest. They didn't use jazz. They entered Roman Empire. And they told them in Roman Empire that Jesus is Lord. That Caesar is no longer Lord. That there's another Lord. His name is Jesus. He's resurrected. And we believe him. And he has sent us here to make this Caesar's territory a, a, a Christ-compliant territory. He has sent us to make this Caesar's territory Christ's disciples. My God. My God. See, 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 see God. And when they saw the religious system rise against them, they went and they just did a simple prayer for boldness. It was just a simple prayer that they prayed for boldness. They needed boldness because they were speaking in, into another economy. They were speaking into another empire. They were preaching the gospel on that Roman Empire. I'm talking about a king's reign. You enter the king's territory and you are declaring another king. 
that can show itself physically to those people. Because those people, they didn't see Jesus as far as they were concerned. They have killed Jesus. The only proof that Jesus was around was these bold men that were moving in the streets to say Jesus is Lord. And so everybody should line up with the new Lord that has come to show himself as the highest authority in heaven and on earth. All they did was to pray for boldness. My scripture tell me, tells me that an earthquake happened. They just prayed for boldness. They prayed out of Psalm 2 or Psalm 82 when they said, oh, uh, indeed, the nations have come together against us. Acts chapter 4, boldness was what they prayed for. They didn't pray for breakthrough. They didn't pray for money. They didn't pray for all what Christians pray for today. They prayed for boldness because they knew that they were inside the Roman territory and they were declaring the reign of another king. Boldness was all they prayed for. Earthquake. The, the, old, the old city started to shake. The Holy Spirit fell again. Only boldness. Why did they require boldness? They were coming into Roman Empire. They were declaring another empire. They were declaring another monarchy. A God-ordained monarchy. God's monarchy on the earth. Roman Empire said, do this. They said, no, we will do it like this because our God said so. Our Lord said. What mess with those people? You see how they were killed? You see how they were killing them? You see how they were killing the early church? Check your history and see how these men were decimated. Check and see how they were killed. They were retired. All of them were retired. The ones that were bearded were bearded. The ones that were son and son that were son and son. The ones that were deprived were deprived. The ones that were fed to lions were fed to lions. Why? Why? Listen, they were running against the thread of, of an empire. The leading empire of the world at that time. The Roman Empire. They were running against the thread. They were telling the Roman Empire that they must come down. Christ must reign until his enemies are brought under his feet. Now, what have we had? We have a democracy. Where people have freedom, even the gay man is telling you that, man, I want my own government here. Give me a gay government. Give me a gay system. Yes, he's using his freedom that the world has given him. Mystery Babylon has given him an intoxication and he's using his freedom. We have freedom of speech, freedom of expression. We have freedom of every, every freedom. Gen democracy promotes freedom. You will have a better opportunity to bring a better solution to your nation as per administration of our territory, administration of our talent, administration of our people. You have a better opportunity because democracy provides a palatable ground for the church to enter and bring another system right from inside that system. But you see, what have the Christians done? Come under the authority of Christ. They said no. They like the authority of men. They like the authority of, of charlatans. They like the authority of diviners. They like the authority of businessmen that have come to carry Bible and cassocks. They like the authority of all those fine boy preachers. All those fine boy preachers. Fine boy apostles that are apostles and, and apostles of their bellies. Democracy afforded us an opportunity to boldly declare our, our message, boldly declare our counsel, boldly declare our gospel. Come against the trade. Come against the system. It's not about submitting to Rome. I'm going to say pray for leaders and pray for men of authority. At that time, Romans 13, the Rome was already taken for Christ. Rome was already obedient. That was why the men were not a terror unto good works. They didn't have a Taliban government. They were not practicing democracy. They were under the authority of Christ. Rome was taken by 66 AD. At the time Romans 13 was inspired, written, that church that he was addressing in Rome, that church has already delivered Rome. He had delivered Rome. All the arrangement of Caesar was Christ compliant. Rome was a Christ compliant nation before 70 AD. Take it from me. Romans 1, Apostle Paul just came into Rome, introducing himself to the people that men I came here to secure obedience in this land. By Romans 13, they are, their government was already obedient. Then he started to tell the people, you know, all over this world, we're coming to turn the nations upside down. Well, you must be submissive to the leaders because all these leaders now are elected by God. Do you understand that statement? 
That statement was not written to Christian denominations. That statement was written to a victorious church. They were not divided in denomination. There was just one church, one people doing one work to secure obedience to King Jesus Christ in Rome. And he told them that, you see, these men are not terror to good works. So as you are here, they'll be happy that you are here. They'll submit their police for you to run your agenda. Because the church has agenda. We're not, we're not seeing work of the ministry. We're not seeing work of the ministry. It's now that we want to become spiritual now. That we want to start work of the ministry. You're going to be seeing prayer works all over the place every time. You're going to be seeing work. That is now you want to see work of the ministry. It's now you want to know why somebody is a pastor. This is the time you want to know why somebody is an apostle. This is the time you want to know why somebody is a prophet. It's the time. It, so you see, the end time is the time for the greatest manifestation of the glory of God. And that expression is called Ecclesia. We are flowing out of Zion. Rivers have not started coming out, but you will see rivers. You will see rivers. You will see rivers. You will see rivers. Rivers are coming out when people come under allegiance to King Jesus Christ. Come under allegiance to King Jesus Christ. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's not difficult to obey this man. It was not difficult to obey Namdi Kanu now. Namdi Kanu is a mortar, a mere mortar. It's a mere mortar. But his God is using him to teach us something. That we can actually, as a people, obey, obey. I'm not saying worship Jesus. No, that's not what I'm saying. Obey Jesus. Because the time has come, obedience is better than worship. Obedience is better than sacrifice. The time has come now. If you really are naming the name of the Lord, obey him. Do his will. What is his will? Get Nigeria. Get your respective nations. Everybody lie down. Lie down. Drop your crowns. Drop your thrones. Drop your ambitions. Drop your life at his feet. You are not telling Christians that. Christians' life has already dropped. The church life has already dropped. Because they are no longer Christians. A, a Christian has himself in the picture. Now the church life... He's already dropped. The guy's not looking for anything for himself. His own is to get the nations to drop their life. Everybody that plays a significant role in the sustainability of cities must drop their life. Everybody's life must be dropped. Look at that, uh, what I saw today. Blew my mind. Blew my mind to shreds. See the old town. It was like a lockdown again. They experienced lockdown at the command of their king. Go and deny that it's not their king. Deny that he's a madman. Deny it. Say he's a madman. But people are listening to him. Whatever he said, people are listening. Even Nigeria government will recognize that, man, some of them are reason the history. The world will recognize from what happened today is a sign that kingdom governments will come back and they will top all this rubbish democracy. They will remove rainbows, they will rubbish democracy from... They, you will never imagine that democracy was even there before. Kingdoms will come back because man was not made to practice democracy and rule himself. Man was not de designed to rule himself. Man was not designed to rule himself. Man was made a king. And his kingship, his dominion on the earth is established when he is under the authority of God. So we need that kingdom back. We need that kingdom dominion back. And Christ, Yeshua, Mashiach, has brought it. We are coming back with kingdom values. Coming back with kingdom mindset. Coming back with kingdom culture. Coming back with kingdom education. We are coming back with kingdom government. Where everybody is obedient to Yeshua, Mashiach. Every flesh, even goats, virus, bacteria, all of them are obedient to Yeshua HaMashiach. We now need the people that will secure this obedience. Canal people cannot do it. Denominational Christians cannot do it. They can't do it. They are canal. They have entered, entered their divisions. And they are enemies of God. They may say, call Jesus Lord. They may do mighty works. They may cast out devils that has made them poor. They may do miracle signs and lying wonders. But as far as the Lord Yeshua is concerned, 
they are workers of iniquity they are workers of iniquity you don't want to be a worker of iniquity you don't want to be running things that offend things that offend the lord you are running a government that is an offense running a religion that is an offense before the lord you are running a system that is an offense building institutions that are offenses before god educational system that is an offense economic system that is an offense establishing a culture in your communities that's an offense all those things will be bundled out of the scene why people want to see their king if you want to see their king, they don't want to see any rubbish democracy or no useless politician that will come and stand in our front and start promising us things that he, that he is a slave to. He's promising us that he will get rid of corruption, but he himself is a product of corruption. We don't need to see all those useless politicians anymore. We want to see king. He can't produce himself, but he wants you to have faith so that you will see him. He wants you to have faith. So that you will see him he wants you to have clean hands so that you can deliberate with him he wants you to have a pure heart your motive must not be about money because it's money that ruined the christian church so money mammon that's what are ruined the christian church mammon and carnality and self that's what are ruined the church that we can't even see that we are, that we are just another people that have jesus brand no power to 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 come under authority of christ if you didn't learn on the 31st of may if you didn't learn anything today, learn that you, in a democracy, you can come under the authority of Christ. The words of Namdi Kanu, the words of Christ. Think about it. Come under the authority of Christ. That means his words make it policy and run in the nations to see that you establish his words as policy. That's the agenda. That's what I want you to see today. If you didn't see anything, that's what I want you to see today. My people, Odion, Odion Nipuga in the building, uh, I want to thank God for giving me this insight. Just putting this holy theme in my heart. And I hope you are inspired. Shalom.